Just a quick note from me as I'm editing. I look super tired in this video. That is because I am. Hello, YouTube. I need to make this video quickly because the rain is picking up and it was not this raining this hard when I left. Um, and I have a feeling I'm gonna get caught in a bit of a storm. But I've got my wellies on, so. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm gonna say in this video. I guess I just wanted to update you all on how my life is going on, well, how my life is going at uni and how I'm doing with all my goals and everything like that. Um, because when I came here, I had a very high, a very bright vision of what my life would look like. And of course it didn't work out that way. Um, but to sum it up, essentially I am not doing too well at the moment. Um, I have not been sleeping right for various reasons or eating right or doing the things that I care about and love. I'm very, I'm very hesitant to sort of go into detail because I made the possible mistake of telling some people I'm close to about this channel, so I'm very conscious of the fact that, um, well, it's not as free and open a uh, confessional space for me anymore. There's now, like, real-life consequences to what I say, so, um, <laughs> but no, I'm finding it very difficult to juggle and balance work, school, social life, societies, things I care about, prayer, oh god, there's just so much happening at once and it feels like I'm slipping a little bit on all of them. I haven't been very consistent in my, in my meditation, in my yoga, anything like that and I know, I know that this is kind of part of an ebb and flow of life that I might be being, that it's a trend transitional period and it's a period of a lot of change and I need to be a little bit kinder to myself but at the same time it's frustrating to every day to XXX on all my habit, habit trackers and so much of that is time as well. I feel like I have so little time but at the same time um, there's a lot of things that are outside of my control like when I work or how late I work. Um, what my friends are up to, what I guess I can control whether I go out with them, that's true. And I have been trying to, but I can't really control what I eat so much anymore either, given that I'm in catered accommodation. So all of your meals are at like specific times and most of the time I miss those times because I'm just, I have too much going on. And my eating has not been good because of that. Not even in like a, oh, I haven't been eating enough kind of way, but in a, I resort to like instant noodles and stuff like that, which is really bad. And I know I'm so aware of the like health consequences and how inflammatory all this stuff is and how it's going to affect me. And, but it, I just, I, I don't even have like a kitchen space where I can cook food for myself. I mean, I have a kitchen space, but it has the microwave. There's no, there's no oven, there's no hob, there's no, I don't know, knives for cutting vegetables. It's the most amount of fruit and veg I can get in a day is, I don't know. I try to get fruit in the canteen, but it's, most of the food there is beige, <laughs> beige food. I just, I miss, I miss cooking for myself. I miss. But I come out in nature when, when I need to feel closer to God, so that's why I'm recording here today. Um, I didn't want to be stuck inside my room with these pressing thoughts. Just, I've been thinking a lot about kind of my purpose because people will keep asking me that. What is your purpose? And the first time um, my friend asked me that, he said, well, I said, uh, my purpose is God, to align myself closer to God. And then he asked me a second time, a couple of weeks later, and I said, mm, I think it's children. 
and I've been thinking about it a lot since then, what I would say, because clearly <laughs> clearly it's not so defined if I sort of flip-flop and change so often, but I think I <sighs> it's something that I think I've been avoiding mentally for such a long time because there's so much like shame associated with this kind of purpose, but I think my life orienteering factor orientating factor is love and the maximization maximization um, putting out as much love as I can and receiving as much love as I can and that's why I think I feel so destitute's not the right word um, I feel so empty at the moment is because there's been a real lack of love in my life lately even though I've made um, some really close friends, I feel quite spiritually empty. But I think there are many roots to love, which is why at first I thought it was God and then I thought it was children. But to me, God and children are ways of experiencing love and pursuing love. Um, and I think if, if my purpose were children specifically, then that would be way too much pressure on them. And then I wonder like, what is my life outside of them? And when they grow up and leave, what will I do? That kind of thing. Um, but I think love rings most true when I think of my purpose and what I want in life. I, I could do without money. I could do without, I don't know, pretty much anything else apart from love. Maybe that's why I'm so enamored and interested in beauty and not not in the superficial sense of like makeup and clothes or whatever but in like a genuine like wow that is beautiful kind of thing um art and architecture and nature and because i think that's a kind of love for the world and a visual representation of love like i kind of think of nature as god's love Although I know some people criticize it and say, oh, it's just, you know, a bunch of gray, but <laughs> I feel sorry for people who don't appreciate the living world as much and all its variety, all its joy, all its sorrow. I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with this video. I guess I just wanted to talk about the fact that I'm not doing so well, but things will get better. I know they'll get better. I just need to kind of, I don't know what I need to do, to be honest. It feels like I'm doing so much and that's really affecting me. I just, I want to just be <laughs> and just live and not worry and not, I don't know. But then that's life, isn't it? People demanding things of you, expectations. <laughs> I can't just exist in an amorphous blob and not be affected by anything or anyone. But I guess I'm missing I'm missing Thailand quite a bit. I think that was as close as I'll get to freedom, although we were quite financially restricted. Um, I think just the freedom of being surrounded by beauty and yet having no like re real responsibilities. I mean that we had like general, you know farm and animal responsibilities but I don't think I've ever been that free and open but then the relationship itself was quite constricting so <laughs> I say that I think emotionally I was constricted but in terms of my endeavors and actions I was very free and that that produced some of the best months of my life to be honest I, I've, I've felt the freedom to be able to do the things I wanted and feel like I was making progress towards my goals and I really had such a consistent and gentle but disciplined life at the same time. I really think that that's what we should be pursuing as women. I've been thinking a lot about the difference of what does it mean to be on self-improvement as someone who is feminine because obviously it's very different for someone who is very, you know, masculine grind set mode um i think gentle discipline is the right way to term it for women be disciplined with yourself but don't go so hard that you know it takes its toll on you that you start to 
negatively affect your holistic health and all that kind of stuff. Um, actually talking about all of this has made me feel a lot better. I was feeling quite blue today, but I'm feeling all right now. <sighs> it's probably to do with the, with being around so much green as well. And you know what? Life offers up these moments of joy despite everything. That's a Sally Rooney quote. <laughs> Things will get better. I'll find, I'll find a way to manifest love. <laughs> My friend actually, she, we were complaining about our love lives and she said, oh, I wonder if we could like stimulate all the love feelings without actually being in like a sexual romantic relationship so we basically well she built up this plan of like the love simulation plan and essentially what we're going to do is commit to each other the way that you would a relationship and hope that it produces like the fulfillment and the satisfaction of a love relationship without the sexual aspect of course um to be honest it was just an idea she had i don't know if we're gonna actually do it but i thought it was really sweet um and i hope i hope that it fulfills me i i've i don't know whether i've ever been fully fulfilled by friendship love you know like sisterhood i've had very close friends in the past but there was always like a a tinge of like homoeroticism to it because we were in a girls school and you know budding teenage puberty hormones but can do i i don't know I feel like, in, in theory, I could absolutely be fulfilled by a sisterhood relationship, but would that be my everything? No, I don't think so. I think I would need to have romantic love as well. I think it's good to optimize all aspects of love in your life. And I guess I should update you guys on the sobriety as well, because I did make that video that said I'm not sober anymore. Well, I think I might have gone a little too hard and fast in my first couple of weeks of non-sobriety. Um, I went out like two or three times last week and it to be honest that's probably why I haven't been feeling so well is because it just took its toll on my body and my routine and for the next couple of days after I was just feeling so messed up and it was to be honest I didn't go that hard well I could have gone harder but it was a good reminder of like oh this this is why this is only for special occasions so at the time, I was feeling quite hung up about it and quite depressed that, you know, I went to a club with my friends and just didn't like it. Um, to, I mean, the club is called Babylon. Come on, it's not going to be <laughs> conducive to my life purpose. But um, I think I'm, I'm going to use these last few days as a learning lesson and being like, OK, step back. You Listen, <laughs> sobriety taught you that you could be sober. Now remember to like fall back on that when you need it. I think drinking should be something rare and special and to do it like every other day is insanely unhealthy. Um, I'm going to keep it as a special occasion type of thing for now, yeah. But I really appreciate everyone's concern and empathy for me over the sobriety video. I promised I was not depressed at all. I think I did, it was a conscious de decision that I wanted to kind of be an adult about uh, becoming non-sober again. Um, but then, you know, I make my mistakes. <laughs> oh, my thoughts are so scattered today. I'm sorry. I'm going to go because it is raining very hard. Um, I will see you guys around. And yeah. God bless and goodbye.